He comes back, just like I knew he would. The core hums in his pack. The monument's calling for it. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Let's Replay Bastion. Last time we got another core, so let's place it in the Bastion and unlock a new plot of land to build on. Kid does it again. Only fair he decides what we build next. By the end of the game, we'll have all of these plots of land around the Bastion unlocked and we'll be able to build all of these buildings. Uh, let's go through what they do real quick, starting with the Memorial. Uh, the Memorial will give you challenges that you can try to complete for extra currency, uh, extra fragments. The Lost and Found lets you purchase idols and new spirits and stuff. Uh, I'm maxed out, so I don't need that. The Distillery, we saw earlier in the game, lets you equip uh, spirits, which give you passive buffs. The Forge, we saw on level 1, uh, it lets you switch your weapon upgrades around, and the Arsenal, which is what I'm going to be building, is what will let us swap our loadouts around, which includes weapons and the, the secret skill. The place of peace, but we can hold our own if we have to. So I'm going to switch over to the Brusher's Pike. Uh, let me switch back to the Mirror Shield, because I picked up the uh, Squirt Lure by accident. Uh, remember, the Mirror Shield is what lets you automatically counter things when you activate it. Uh, so it'll last like three or four seconds and then auto counter everything that comes in to attack you. And from here we can move on Picked out. Up traces of other cores while the kid was out. To find some new cores. Uh, we have a uh, proving ground up there. It's like a little trial that tests how adept you are using that particular weapon. Each weapon in the game has its own uh, proving grounds, which I'll, I might show off in a bonus video. For now, though, we're going to move on to the next level of the game to get a new core. In better days, the melting pot was sealed tighter than the skin on the squirt. It's a very super time force way to uh, open the level. To survive the calamity, it had to be stab weeds. Blasted things hurt like a broken heart. That's a great line. Uh, the stab weeds are like little bramble bushes. And the Brusher's Pike, uh, which I just equipped... Actually, what did I just pick up? I think that was uh, the upgrade material. Yeah. Um, the Brusher's Pike is awesome. It's one of my favorite weapons to use. Uh, it's a long-range melee weapon. You can throw it around like a javelin. It does really high damage, and it's got a medium attack speed. Uh, it's, it's a really, really strong weapon. If there's a core, he figures it ought to be deeper down. Um, and there's also a secret skill associated with it that lets you, uh, pole vault with it. Core stuck inside one of those fancy cages. No break in a cage like that, but the kid tries anyway. Gotta find a way to spring it open. He throws a switch. Now what could possibly go wrong? So, uh, over on the left, or Quite below me bit, now, as it turns out, there's a new secret skill we can pick up. I have it unlocked already, but I'm not using it. It's a trip mine. It'll trigger when things get close to it and do a whole lot of AoE damage. Shipment start falling. All right, here we go. Uh, so the core is trapped under a cage. The cage is uh, raising very, very slowly. We have a gauntlet to deal with until that raises up so we can get the core. We're going to have tons of squirts spawning in. Uh, the pike at this point will one-shot the crates that spawn enemies. Uh, when you see the crates drop in and they're growing larger and larger, they're lifting off the ground, eventually they'll spawn an enemy in, it, in if you don't destroy it. Uh, we also have friendly squirts spawning in to help us out. We'll get some gas fillers too later on. Uh, so while this gauntlet's going on, uh, I'll clear a few things up. Don't take kindly to into the oh, now we've uh, scumbags too. Uh, I'll clear a few things up about the basic controls of the game, uh, since we we kind of got introduced to a whole lot of new stuff Even right at the very beginning of the game last time. Birdie pop that mean old foreman. Oh yeah, they're helping us out because we killed the foreman. Um, so we have our our roll it has a little bit of invincibility. At we move rate, faster while rolling. Uh, it's not the the recovery time on it, it's pretty quick. We have our block. Uh, most attacks can be blocked, with a few exceptions. Uh, you can't block the uh, the blue goo from the scumbags that you're standing in. If you block at the last second, the attack uh, against you will be reflected as a counterattack, and the enemy will take a whole lot of damage, and they'll also be stunned. Um, you have healing, which depends on the blue tonics on the the health bar. It ain't all bad. 
as a kid finds some spices from the motherland, tax free. Yeah, we picked up. Uh, I don't know if that's a memento or an upgrade material. We'll look at that later. Uh, we have our secret skills, sure. which you can have one in your loadout at a time. I think there are 18 total. Oh, we have turrets spawned in two. I think that's... What kind is that? Is that flamethrower? Yeah, there are all different types of turrets. Um, some of the secret skills, like I mentioned with the pole vault, are specific to certain weapons. Uh, the skills are just like active on-use things that depend on those three black tonics at the top. Uh, the mirror shield is my current one. And then we have our two attacks, our two different weapons. Um, you get two weapons at a time out of for a total uh, blah, out of a total of twelve. Some of the weapons can be charged, some can be thrown, some are melee. Uh, they run the gamut. There's a lot of variety, and they're all upgradable. Give or take a few seconds. Oh shit, that's not blockable. That whirlwind from uh, the red gas fellas. Yee. God damn, this is getting chaotic. Uh, Lifeline just triggered, so I think that I think Lifeline prevents an attack that would otherwise be fatal from killing you. Uh, now that I have the core, I can just make a break for the barge and get out of here. I'm out. Uh, most of the weapons and the materials and skills and stuff you find normally throughout the levels, like we would have gotten... We normally would have gotten the trip mine back there after that one. in the melting pot. Uh, you would you normally get all this stuff over the course of a playthrough, but since I'm in New Game Plus, I have it all unlocked the already. World's finished, but the new world's just getting started. Okay, so we have our third plot unlocked already. Uh, not all of the levels are actually going to yield uh, core fragments or uh, cores. Be fixing up in this world, and we can start right here. So now that I have uh, my forge unlocked, let me go through all my upgrades and make sure things are sorted out. Uh, most of the stuff is just going to be like more damage, more critical, uh, more critical damage, faster attack speed, range, more spread for the flamethrower, stuff like that. Some of it, you know, like uh, there's a, a fire bellows upgrade that will. Oh, and we unlocked uh, the machete proving ground. Some of it adds uh, debuffs, stuff like uh, damage over time effects, cripple. Um, actually, I want to head back real quick. I want to switch my weapons out. I think I want to go with maybe the dual pistols for this one. I want to try to show off as many uh, weapons and stuff as possible. Maybe the machete. Maybe I'll do the machete later on uh, this. What about the hand grenade? Let's try that one out. Folks voyaged across the boundless sea to found Zelandia. It was good living here for a while. Most of the story that we're going to find out, aside from uh, the basic plot beats about the Bastion and the Calamity, all that stuff, it's mostly going to be lore that we find through item descriptions and through talking to Rux the narrator. So on top of all the, uh, the controls and the gameplay mechanics I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of RPG systems in this too. Uh, the game is essentially an action RPG. We have experience, um, I'm maxed on that, on upgrades, we have abilities and buffs. Couples used to walk the sundown path. Kid ain't here for pleasure though. Uh, and these are the dual pistols. They fire as fast as you can tap the trigger. Uh, and because I have an upgrade for this, the uh, dual pistols will ricochet just like we saw with the repeater earlier on in the, uh, the tutorial section of the game. But then, somebody gets to the core before the kid. The floor starts giving way under the lightest step. A single panic squirt could bring the whole place down. Man, I love Practice this effect, the like the way the, the ground procedurally forms up underneath your feet. This has always been such a cool effect to me. Well, the path ain't exactly open to visitors no more. Security's all fired up. Wires to toss those things plenty far away. See, the path was intended to be strolling and such. So, as the ground turns red, as the tiles turn red, they will fall away, uh, and you'll take a little bit of damage if you fall off the path, which you can do. Um, and Rux will even comment on it sometimes. There we go. A little bit of counter. Sky bridges link the path. Whips the kid along. 
Okay, now we're gonna have to start. Always was an iffy proposition. Now we have to start navigating the level via the sky bridges that kind of toss you around ragdoll style. Um, I don't think I actually have to deal with all these turrets. Might help though. Oh, that's another new type. Uh, these turrets send projectiles at you that track you very, very slowly. They home in on you. The calamity changed everything, even when the wind rose. And the projectiles don't necessarily go straight back if you counterattack them, or if you uh, counter well, if the turrets with a the quick block. The days, we can do it again. Sometimes it'll just kind of orbit the you. Question is, who else could have taken the core? Oh shit! Oh uh, yeah, let me just roll well, my way out of here. Ain't no survivor stole the thing. It's another big scumbag. Ah, uh, the squirts, the gas scumbag, fellas, and the scumbags are all mistake. the same organism. They're just different uh, li uh, stages in the life cycle. They're all the same species, that's what I'm looking for. No, they used to ship live munitions down the path. Uh, what do I have to, to Oh, it. I have to pick the grenade up. The hand grenade is another secret skill. Um, and it will, as it says, toss a little grenade. Which is actually pretty useful. Um, I like burning carousel and mirror shield the most. The, uh, the pike jump is really good, too. Burning Carousel is good for crowd control. It's the it's like uh, the Salandian Hammer or Whirlwind, except with, like, little puffs of flame. In all this toil, Kid keeps coming back to an overwhelming question. Who else could have survived the Calamity? So he didn't find the core that time, but that ain't about to stop us. And that is, I think, the first level we've come to where we have not left it with a core. Uh, even though we see core detected on this uh, little world map, not all of the levels are going to have cores for us. And uh, we have to go through all of them anyway. The dead. The dead ain't gotta worry about this mess. The calamity took everybody after all. Kid sees it plain, frozen faces all around. You don't much care to see him. Not like this. I like how Rux justifies me just breaking all the, the petrified Salandians. These folks never saw the calamity coming. But someone did. Someone close. Someone who ain't like Mr. Beckley and his kindly wife. It was someone like him. The narration does such a good job with the with uh so getting so lore across and world building. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. He ain't about to stop. No matter what. He's got so many questions after all. This is a much more morose level. You can tell by the soundtrack and the, just the color palette gets that across too. I appreciate that Bastion could have just been a strong game, it could have just been good gameplay, or it could have just been jaw-dropping aesthetics. Supergiant, it's such a credit to them that they marry those together so, so well. You have this really crisp, simple action RPG with a ton of things to play around with, fused with some of, like, the all-time best presentation. Grady Senior, Grady Junior, they didn't make it, but him. He survived. Like this beautiful watercolor look, gravelly Just think, sound of rocks narrating. Man, we wouldn't be here right now. Oh my We're god. Here. So good. Kid does what he has to do. And then you have the soundtrack. Oh my god, and the then, soundtrack. What do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this. We have to go. Please. He's a proper gentleman, that man. 
His name is Zolf. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylandia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind. Both to him and to each other for the first time. For Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home too, far to the east. We all lost loved ones in the calamity, he says. I don't know how I'm gonna go on without mine. <clears throat> we really haven't progressed the plot too much so far, but already two episodes into this LP, the game feels Stick so lived in and rich. Makes no difference. Kid ain't finished here yet. Oh, right. The cores, they remember. That's why this place is coming together. That's why things are gonna be all right. Zolf here is a member of a race known as the Ura, which we'll learn more about over time. Uh, also, I think I'm gonna switch out for the uh, War Machete just to show that off. It's not gonna be ideal for uh, this 10 idle New Game Plus run. Uh, you'll see why momentarily. Just let's make sure that's upgraded properly. Um, I think War I want that critical so hit damage. You gotta keep a good grip on him. Attacks cripple. Yeah, that 20, like, for as much critical, Points extra critical hit damage as, thing, as this thing does, I want all the crit chance I can get. Yeah, this, that's, that seems good. Well, look what we have here. Uh, let's build a distillery, because the other two, uh, the other two buildings aren't going to provide that much utility cores for this playthrough. Um, yeah, let's check out Pith's Orchard. Uh, Pith, if you remember, was the uh, bull god, so we're going to learn more about one of the deities of Bastion here. The gods, they're all undone. Folks used to make pilgrimage here to pay their respects to Pith, the bull. Well, the gods are long gone now, and the orchard core is long gone too. Seems Pith ain't much of a watchdog. Pith stood for something once, something real. In time though, the bull stopped being a symbol and started being decoration. Pith makes a decent scarecrow at least. There's a huge sense of foreboding in this level because it's one of the few times where the music is purely ambient. Ain't easy punching through his hide. So during his active phase, he's just spewing black shit at us, which will do damage if you don't block it. Must have been guarding that shrine. And then he gets tired for a little bit. And you can damage him. Or tell him off. Kid decides to press his luck. The gods ain't gonna catch you if you fall. Well, if the gods are alive, they must be plenty sore. Kid ain't never seen windbags that quick. Maybe old Pith put a scare in him. We have Terminal March, our battle music playing, so as we backtrack through the level, uh, we are gonna be fighting our way backwards. There's actually a whole lot to deal with. Including another one of those, uh, the pith bulls that we passed on the way here. So this level actually didn't yield all that much, uh, aside from some lore and some background information on pith. Uh, we didn't get out of here with a core. Uh, if you're doing this play, if you're on your first playthrough, this is gonna be one of the first places you can actually encounter a shrine. Just make sure I backpedal while I'm blocking. Uh, put that damage over time on him. Kid ain't found a core, but at least he found Zolf's precious shrine. And we find out that there was Zolf's shrine. And uh, that's gonna do it for this episode. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.